Liam Halligan, GB News' economics editor, who's not been off our screens all week. Um, <laughs> inflation is worse than predicted. Interest rates have gone up by half a percent today. Is it that they have to force us into a recession to get inflation down? Well, that certainly seems like it to a lot of ordinary people who are facing much, much higher mortgage payments in the months to come. It was a surprise when inflation yesterday, Nigel, you and I talked yeah. about it, stayed at 8.7% in May. Everyone thought it would come down, but it stayed there. And it was a surprise today when the Bank of England raised rates not by a quarter of a percentage point, but by a half of a percentage point from 45 to 5%. Yeah. And since then, the money markets are pricing in the interest rates could go to 6% at the Bank of England, and that would push up mortgage rates to 7 8% and more. And all of this unforeseen by the Governor of the Bank of England. Well, Andrew Bailey, he's got a tough job, but he made his job a lot tougher because in 2020 and 2021, when people like me, and I know you as well, yep. we were warning, yep. even though inflation's low, there's going to be a big inflation surge it's because coming. when lockdown lifts, you're going to have a wall of demand hitting an economy that's been shuttered and is going to struggle to get back up to speed. And the Bank of England, the establishment, they didn't want to hear about it. It'll be fine, old boy. It's transitory, they kept telling us. Then we had the big inflation, which everyone in this room, everyone across the country is feeling when they go to the shops and they get their groceries yeah. for their family, when they fill up their cars. So inflation is still high in the UK. We're almost an outlier now, Nigel. In the, even in the Eurozone, your favourite part of the world, inflation is 6% and in the US it's 4%. Here it's 8.7% so and suddenly high. Are the good people of Barnsley and elsewhere paying for the incompetence of the Governor of the Bank of England? I think they're certainly paying for the groupthink at the Bank of England because the Bank of England appoints nine economists on a sort of rotating schedule. Yeah, and look who they are. The Monetary Policy Committee, they're pretty much all appointed by the Treasury. You've got to be a nice, shiny, happy, groupthinky, respectable, Governor. toilet trained economist. <laughs> you, can't be, you can't be an out of the box thinker. And, you can't and, and they're Remainers, Liam. You, you, you can't be somebody, Nigel, who they're thinks Remainers. that the idea of expanding the money supply massively, as they have done through quantitative easing, as we must call it, yep. money printing, as it's been called during history that might actually generate inflation. I've been talking about that in my Telegraph columns for years and years and years. So have other economists, people like us, the undesirables, the beyond the pales. We never get invited to be on the Monetary Policy Committee to be part Andrew of these Bailey, decisions. Andrew Bailey was appointed. It needed a lever to be appointed. We were becoming Brexit Britain. We needed somebody who actually believed in it. Is it time to sack the governor? Well, you know what? If you sack the governor in the middle of what is pretty much a crisis now on money markets, Investors are trying to decide if this move by the Bank of England, which is a shock move, as everyone in this room knows, is the Bank of England asserting itself and getting its arms around inflation, climbing on top of the problem, or is it a cry for help? Is it a panic move? The money markets still haven't decided. Yields on government debt are going up and down all over the place. There's not a settled view. I, uh, in my yeah. view, if you sack the Bank of England governor now, if you change horses in the middle of the race, it could go wrong. You could cause even more problems. You know, Andrew Bailey is not Sam Allardyce. He's not going to stop us being relegated. <laughs> Maybe for a week it would. I get rid of him. I bet the people of Barnsley get rid of him. But we can't get rid of him because the legislation that Gordon Brown put in place says he can only be removed by the court of the Bank of England if he's missed several meetings or he's actually physically and mentally unfit to do the job. So there he is, cushioned in his job, uh, you know, over half a million quid a year and a total incompetent. The cost of living, Liam. People say, oh, well, you know, in Barnsley, uh, house prices are cheaper, uh, wages are a bit lower, of course. Uh, but the reality is in Barnsley, they still pay the same car tax, they still pay the same car insurance, they still pay the same electricity bills as people living in Surrey or Cheshire. I mean, this for people in areas like this, this mortgage hike is real, isn't it? It is, it is real indeed. And, you know, the, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, which is an independent body, they're saying that the increment, the incre the, you know, just the extra bit you're paying your yep. mortgage each month, if you add it up over the year, those people coming off these fixed rate deals, the five, three and two year fixes that are now unwinding, 
during a period from 2017 when rates were ultra low and they started going up massively from the beginning of 2022, the average increment on mortgage payments is going to be something like two grand a year, even two and a half grand a year. For any family in any part of the country, that is a big hit. In some parts of the country, that's a big slug of the household income. And that's why I do think the government's got to act. Tomorrow morning, I'll be hot-footing it to Downing Street. I'll be talking to the Chancellor. There's going to be an emergency seminar between the Chancellor and mortgage providers. I think mortgage providers, in an age of social media, they're going to find it really hard to start repossessing homes, to start evicting people. People will rebel. People will start, you know, phone, you know filming on their phones, their mates <laughs> being chucked out of their houses, massive PR issues. I think the mortgage providers are going to have to be forced to make home loans longer, move us from repayment mortgages to interest-only mortgages, give us repayment holidays in order to try and get us through this period when None interest rates will are None high. of this in the short term is going to make life easier, is it? No, it isn't. This is, th we are in the most serious economic situation in this country since the 2008 financial crisis. That's where we are now. And the fact that I haven't been home for four days really is indicative of that. I don't think it is the 2008 financial crisis. I don't think our banks are going to collapse because of the weight of debt. But there are some people in this country, particularly people in their 30s and their 40s trying to raise families, very, very who've had to extend themselves to buy just a decent house. We know how difficult it is to get our kids on the housing ladder these days. I do think a lot of them are going to suffer and it's going to have massive political implications, particularly for the Conservative Party. A couple of minutes we've got left. I want to have a quick look at Rishi's five pledges. As the late Bruce Forsyth would have said... Didn't he do well? No. 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 Let's have a look at the old school board, is what he just said uh, first. I thought you were going to say, give us a 12. We will halve inflation. Inflation will be 2.9% by the end of the year. How's he doing on that one? Uh, he's got two hopes, Nigel. Bob, Bob Hope, no, no hope. hope. Right, OK. <laughs> We will grow the economy. Well, it's flatlining, isn't it? it and, is and, flat about, and about to go into a It recession. is flatlining, and I think the fact that the Bank of England feels, to go back to your first question, yep. which I didn't mean to skirt, the fact that interest rates are going up so much, that is pretty likely to push us into recession. Right. Third economic promise is we will make sure the national debt is falling. I understand well, it's now 2.6 well, trillion. We, we, we didn't even notice yesterday, because we were so busy wanging on about inflation, weren't we, that the national debt went to 100.1% of GDP, yeah. bigger than the size yeah. of the whole annual yeah. economy. So, that hasn't happened yeah. since the Beatles were singing <laughs> Twist and Shout. 1961, it was even before that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were writing it. So, fail, fail, fail. Cut NHS waiting lists, they're 7.2 million. Oh, and my favourite, we're going to stop the boats.